Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Greetings, mystery lover. Welcome to another Let George Do It adventure. This one carries the enlightening title of How Gullible Can You Get? But I don't want you to think for one minute that our boy Valentine got hooked by the old shell game, because he didn't. At least I don't think so. Maybe I better listen along with you and find out just what the authors did have in mind. Mr. Valentine. Is Mr. Valentine yeah, right in here? Come in. Thanks, I am. Yeah, so I noticed. What's the hurry? Oh, I'm sorry. Time's a little short, that's all. Whose time? Mine. Oh, no, no. Look, I'm not running away from anything. I just got a lot to do. And you need help. Okay, what is it? No, I don't. Huh? I can take care of myself. Golden gloves only seven years ago. What do you think of that? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, look, look, here. It's an envelope. So I gathered. You've been waving it around ever since you came in. Well, that's all I need you for, just the envelope. Want me to open it? No, no, it's sealed, wax and everything. Just keep it for me. Why? What's in it? I'll be back within 24 hours. Wait a minute. This isn't a check room. Now, look, I got no time for kidding, understand? Neither have I. What's this all about? I'm just playing it safe, that's all. I want to make sure none of the wrong people get hurt. By what? Or by whom? Hey, sit down, will you? Oh, now, listen, Mr. Valentine. Would you believe a guy who's an expert on guns could get himself killed just cleaning one? Particularly when the guy's got a million bucks? What's all this? Yeah, you see? I don't believe it either. I ask you. How gullible can you get? So? Okay, I'll see you later. Hey, Buster, not so fast. Oh, well, here. Here, uh, my name. Joe Murtry. Phone number. It, it's a rooming house. That's where you can get me. Hey, Joe, look, for the last I time... I haven't you... got time to explain, don't you understand? But I'll tell you this. If I don't show up in 24 hours, give that envelope to the district attorney. Okay? He'll know a murder when he sees one. Well, that was quick. Sure. Interesting, too. So informative. That's where you go. To see what that half brain head's for? Hello. Well, same to you. Go on inside. Miss Brooks will take care of you. Oh, no, no, wait, please. Was there a man here? Uh, what type of man would you like? Oh, please don't be funny. His name is Joe. How gullible can you get? What? <laughs> Never mind. I couldn't be funny if I tried right now. No, no, please. I, I, I just want to. Go on to be inside with the... and tell me about it. No, let go Joe, of me. Joe, who's I... Joe? What kind of a guy is he? What's a nice girl like you want let with a guy? Go of me! Hey, 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 take it easy. George, what's going on? I simply asked you a question. Oh, oh never mind. I'll find Joe myself. But look, lady. Oh, this... I know he was here, all right. I'm sorry. Thanks, anyway. I'm in a hey, hurry. Wait, elevator, hold it, will you? No, no, get away. Hey, wait, elevator. You, whatever your name is. Hey, you. Oh, for the love of Why don't you try the stairs? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> quite a little tableau. Maiden secretary flees from office of prominent detective. Yeah, well, this is life. Look, Buster, it's my bad morning. Don't make it yours. I'll give you about two seconds to tell me something. How I know you're a detective? Because I'm one. Here, here. My identification. Upstairs, same building. Ah, well, Jake Rennick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've noticed a sign. Only, how do you know that girl's a secretary? Because uh, I don't have business. Because you do. Because I have time to read the newspaper. Huh? Let me see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw them barreling in and out of your place and couldn't resist watching. Don't you know who they are? Oh, boy, it's a juicy case. You'll get a nice fat commission. Prominent industrialist dies accidentally. Huh. Gun expert J.J. Connolly was fatally wounded last night when repairing a rifle. He was visiting his house guest at the home of Mr. Sure, that's what Joe was talking about. Look on page three. I always remember a face, that's all. Oh, don't ask me questions. Just do in your favor. Yeah, pictures of both of them. Mm -hmm. Joe Murtry, chauffeur at the death home, who refused to answer police questions. Get it? <laughs> so Joe works for Mr. and Mrs. Duncan Hale, so that's it. For the guy who was hosting this man who died. Uh, the man who was Hale's partner. Yeah. Thanks for the paper, friend. Oh, I got a case, all right. That girl I just chased was Hale's confidential secretary who also refused to answer questions. You are 
are listening to Let Charge Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. Now back to Let Charge Do It and George Valentine. But, George, you said you wanted to go over and talk to Mr. Hale as soon as possible. Yeah, well, he's the guy they both work for. He's the guy who benefited from this Connolly's debt. But this envelope... Yeah, it goes in your handbag, young. What? Yeah, help me find another one, will you? George, wait. What's in it? One thing at a time. I want another envelope, just like it. Yeah, here we are. Hey, you got some red wax? Oh, and here. Some of that typing paper. But what are you doing? Well, I'm fixing myself an envelope. Sure, we'll take care of Joe's for him, all right? You mean I will? It goes in the bank, Angel. As soon as you leave it there, get in touch with Lieutenant Johnson. Find out all he knows about this case. All right, there we are. Seal it. Now we're all set. To do what? To turn the tables, Brooksy. To find out how important Joe's envelope is. Yeah, I'm going to wave mine in front of some faces and see how gullible other people can get. I'm sorry, no. No, no, I won't see anyone, you understand? Your uh, name's Hale, isn't it? Now, look, if you're from a newspaper... Oh, look, I'll get your foot away from... Uh, well, of all the nerve I, I said I'm to... sorry, but I have to talk to you. Oh, is that so? You mean you want me to talk? Like everyone else, from the police to the reporter... I only read newspapers, Mr. Hale. But I know what you mean. Getting a little tired of having the finger pointed at you, huh? Why? I did kill my partner. He died accidentally. Oh, I know. Preliminary police report. But it happened here in your house. Mr. Connolly was the one with the money. You and he never got along very well. And today, you've apparently given out conflicting statements... Stop it! Will you stop it? I know I've been pretty crude, all right, but there's no reason to get that excited. What's the big idea? Why not... Oh. This is my wife. Hello. What is it? What is it, Duncan? Oh, it's, it's nothing, my dear. There's no need for you to Who get involved. Who are you? Involved. What are you here for? Oh, Mrs. Hale, I only wanted to see your husband no. and find out... No, if there's any way I can help, I want to help. Sit down, please. Now, Mary, for the love of God. I think everyone should know everything, don't you, Duncan? Mary. <laughs> only there isn't anything to know. That's the absurd part of it. Mary. I'll handle this in my own way. Be quiet. You heard what the lawyers told you. Now, you will leave, won't you? Whoever you are, my husband isn't concerned. We've had a very tragic thing happen oh, here. Wait a minute. Look, my name is George Valentine. And if you I... don't leave this instant, my husband will prefer charges. Oh, now, leave us. Please leave us. Goodbye. Oh. Uh, my wife is, is very upset. I'm sure you understand. Uh, I'll show you to the door. Is, is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. Goodbye, Mrs. Hale. What changed your mind, Mr. Hale? My name? Well, I've heard of you, naturally. I suppose you get sore again if I say your wife's not a very good actress. Now, what do you want? Well, I have an envelope here. Oh. Oh, yes, I see. Hey, tell me, you have a secretary who wears glasses? What? Oh, Mamie Everett. Yeah. Well, but she she left me a week or so ago. She's certainly not concerned with with what happened. Okay, okay. You expected me to ask about somebody else, your chauffeur Joe, is that right? That. Meaning yes, eh? Oh, why do you waste my time? How much do you want? For the letter? Well, I just naturally assumed. How I much mean... did you pay? Now, see here, Valentine, I, I haven't admitted anything. Oh, yes, you have, friend. It's all I want to know. See you later. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. I heard Stop. you the first time. Man all set to be exonerated of murder is still willing to pay for what's in this envelope. That's all I need oh, to know. Oh, you give me oh, that? No, you don't. You black man. You're on the wrong side for that kind of action. Yeah, that's better. Okay, see you later, Mr. Hale. Oh, please. Please, Mr. Valentine. Sorry, friend. From here on, the police can... Are you all right? Oh, 
Oh, yeah, sure. Yes. It's wonderful. It must have been something I ate. Well, I came out as fast as I could. Oh. You were just lying here. I went to the bank, and then after yeah, that, yeah, I... Yeah, was... I know. Blackmailing. What? The you... original envelope. Police can have it. Open it. Whoever knocked me out got just a bunch of blank paper. But Joe has evidence of murder. He must have been planning to blackmail Mr. Hale in there. Well, come on. Pick yourself up. Johnson. Let's get back inside. Hey, where'd you come from? Standing right here, waiting for you to open your eyes. Listen, no. Hey, Johnson, you get after Joe, will you? What? The chauffeur, if he doesn't plan blackmail, then he's in danger. If he does, he's going to be in worse trouble for figuring me as a gullible stool. Look, Valentine, come to the party. Johnson, I got his name and address here. He's a big guy. I know exactly what he looks like. I've seen his body. His what? George, your client Joe's been murdered. listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. And now, back to George Valentine. How gullible can you get? A man named Joe rushes in with an envelope he wants you to keep. A girl named Mamie rushes in after him. And why? Because apparently Joe knows something about his employer, Duncan Hale, a man whose rich partner died accidentally. Or did he? And anyway, if your name is George Valentine, right now you're mostly concerned with Joe himself because Lieutenant Johnson and Miss Brooks say that now Joe is dead too. Hey, tell me, what happened, Lieutenant? What happened, he says, like I'm a news analyst or something. Man in a boarding house room with holes in him, period. Came right out to get you. I thought you'd know something. Only instead, I've been asleep. Huh? And the envelope gets taken away from me. Well, that was only the dummy one that George carried, Lieutenant. Yeah, and it wasn't Hale who hit me. I'd already left him standing at the door. I was walking up the path here when somebody... But he might have seen it. Come on. What about the death of Hale's partner, Lieutenant? All we know is what we've read in the newspaper. Connolly, accident was what the police said. That was their testimony to the coroner? The brilliant police. Now, take it easy. I wasn't on it, but a very good man was. He claimed that... Hey, the door's open. Come on, come on. Mr. Hale. Mr. Hale. Mr. Hale! Not home yet. Must have left in a hurry. Hey, Hey, look here, the fireplace. He also burned something in a hurry. A piece of wax. It was not burned around it, and it's still stuck together. George, it was the envelope. Yeah, that's right, Angel. Only how did he get it? If Hale was the one who burned it. I mean, whoever slugged me must have taken it. So how did Hale get it? Riddle jet. And here's another one, the wax. He apparently burned it in such a hurry, he didn't look inside to know there was nothing in it. You'd have seen the paper curling in the flame, at least. You'd have found that out all right, only... Wait a second. Where are you going? Well, she came from back this way. Here, the hall down to the bedroom. Now, this is what I guess. Mrs. Hale. Hey, Mrs. Hale. George, this must be her room here. Hmm. She's not home either. You know, I'm getting a little doubtful myself now about whether that first death was an accident or not. Huh. The old family's sure gone into action, hasn't it? How much of a real family is it? Huh? How'd you know? Know what? Hey, look, the door to the patio's left open, too. The garage out there. Only it's empty. No, I meant here on the dressing table. He's going over some letters, apparently. Something about a divorce. That's right. They're practically separated. But that didn't have anything to do with Connolly's death. Listen to this. It's so hard to tell what to do. But you know how I feel about you, and the minute you divorce Duncan... Here, let me see that. A letter from a boyfriend. They're pretty close-mouthed about the reason for separation. These letters are from a Mr. Conley, Lieutenant. What? Yes, the man who was shot accidentally. Her husband's partner. And they're rather close to being love letters. Well, for the love of... Come on, we gotta move fast. Yes, yes. Get out on an alarm. Find Mrs. Hale. And in the meantime, let's find out what happened to Joe the chauffeur. Anything 
fingerprint, Sergeant? Anything to show who was up here with Joe when he was shot? Uh, no, sir, but he sent a wire after he came back here from Valentine's office. The Western Union gave us a copy. Well, what was it? Well, it, uh, it said the mailbox at uh, 331 East Plaza will be open. My price is 10000 Take it or leave it, but fast. Signed, Joe the Envelope. Oh, humorous. Huh? But who was it sent to? Uh, Mr. Hell, sir. You know, but it's a funny thing. Western Union said it was his wife who signed for it. Three three one East Plaza. This is it. Yeah, yeah, it's a little place. Shutters are up. This is for rent time. You sure that's the right house? Empty right? house, Angel. Empty house. Perfect place for a payoff. Come on, let's go. Mm. Yeah, you've been right all along, I guess. Joe was nothing but a blackmailer, and instead of getting 10000 he got bullets. Hey, wait a minute. Do people usually park in front of vacant lots? Huh? That old car over there with nobody in it. Why park there? Well, it's right across from 331, George. Take a look, will you, Miss Brooks? Registration? Yeah, if somebody's still in the house here. We don't want folks in danger. Well, you move over to the side. I don't want to take any chances. And the minute I give you the signal, we'll hey. take... Hey, is that you, Mr. Valentine? Lieutenant? I think it's safe now, Captain. Hello, Mr. Hale. Oh, come in here. I need your help. What are you doing out here? One thing at a time, Lieutenant. Mr. Valentine... Is that Mr. Valentine? Oh, no, no, Mamie. Well, the secretary, where'd you pick her up? Right here. I, I'm all right. I, gee, I'm, I'm perfectly all right now. I bumped into her when I came in a few minutes ago. I, yeah, but I, I'm all right. I, I was just frightened, that's Take it all. easy, Mamie. Take it easy. What happened? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I was looking for Joe, and, and when I found him at his place, he was dead. He was dead, but... But he'd scribbled out a, a copy of a telegram he'd sent. And, and so I, I came out here. But, but gee, I, I had to take the streetcar. So I only got here myself 15 minutes ago. Yeah, just 15 minutes ago. When I came inside, I, I heard men's voices. Only then I, I guess they heard me. And then, then somebody slammed a door in my face and shoved me into a closet. Hey, but hey, I, hey, wait a minute. I, 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 hold it, will you? Well, forget it. What? You'll get your turn. Yeah. I want to know about Mr. Hale. All right, what about me? Just how you got here. Pretty old car out there for a man like you. Hey, Mamie, when he came in, did he come in alone? Well, you see, I used to be Mr. Hale's secretary, and when that awful thing happened about Mr. Comey dying, I... Well, I knew that Mr. Hale couldn't have killed him. But I also knew what kind of a person Joe was, and... And that he'd try something like blackmail, oh, and so I Maybe, had to... Maybe, wait a minute. Don't try to cover up for Hale. That's not what I ask you. I want to know if he came in alone. George, they found Mrs. Hale. What? Your sergeant's outside, Lieutenant. He says they located her. She's back at her house. <laughs> oh, what's so funny? Hey, Angel, that car out there is registered to Rennick, isn't it? Yes. Who? Rennick? A myopic private eye, Lieutenant. Now, look, Valentine, there are enough people in trouble without... Hey, breaking. where are you, Rennick? Hey, Rennick, come on out. Look, but he works for me, Valentine. Rennick! I tell you, you come can't on, do it. Come this. on out of All it. right, all right. Now, take it easy, take it What's easy. What's going on? Who is this bird? I have credentials, Lieutenant. This is the bird who flew into the next room when he saw me coming. You know why? Because he's all we need to put this jigsaw puzzle together. He's also a little shy because he's the one who tapped me on the head. That's all I know, see? I work for Hale, and it's perfectly legitimate. And there's nothing you can Wait a do. Minute, will you please? Got everybody in there, Lieutenant? Yeah. Also a man from the bank who says Mrs. Hale drew out ten thousand bucks. Well, that makes sense. Ten thousand? Yeah, what about that? Well, I won't say anything about that, because I don't know anything about it. She was at the bank, yes. Then what but... do you know anything about? Talk before I take your license oh, away. Oh, look, Johnson, he works for Hale. He's the one who phoned Hale to tell him that Joe had been up to bring me that envelope. Then he went out there, and when Hale didn't get the envelope away from me, he took it away. After that, Mrs. Hale left the house. Yes, and she... she ran out the back way. She'd answered the door for somebody. I don't know who it was. Western Union. Joe's wire, remember? Well, when Mr. Hale heard her go, he was very upset. So we followed her to the bank. Then we saw her again, just as she was leaving that house in East Plaza. So we stopped and went in. And that's when we came in. Okay, Jake. Thanks. Now, look, everything I've done has been perfectly legitimate, Lieutenant. 
Just because you people think Hale murdered somebody is no reason for you to go... The police never said Hale killed Connolly until maybe now when he started acting like it. Hey, Johnson, how's he acting right now? <laughs> See for yourself. Did you get Joe's real envelope from the bank for me? Yeah, I just got here, so hurry up and open it. Hey, where'd that come from? <laughs> two envelopes, Buster. Even a private eye with two heads shouldn't be as gullible as you were. Well, decided to tell us everything you know yet, Mr. Hale? My lawyer will be here in a few minutes. Now, look, Mr. Hale. Oh, leave him alone, Johnson. How about you, Mrs. Hale? Oh, no, please not. You'll have to talk, lady. You were seen paying $10,000 blackmail. Wait to... a minute. Wait just a minute. We only seen her go up and put something in the mailbox and then leave. Now, that's all. Jake, be quiet. Well... Yeah, there wasn't anything in the mailbox when we got there. Sergeant, start searching these no, people. No, no, no. Wait a minute. You don't need that. Huh? Oh. oh, of course not. You're right. We've got the answer right in our hands, the envelope. What it was that Joe knew about Connolly's death. No, wait a minute. Please, please. Mary, I... darling, don't say anything until my lawyer... Hurry up, Valentine. Open up, will you? It is the answer to everything, Johnson. To a very simple case. <laughs> How gullible can you get? There, you see... Just blank paper. Well, what in the name of... When these people start talking, you'll see how simple it really is. And I know how to make them talk, too. Hey, uh, Maisie, come here, will you? Yeah. Uh, over here with me. Yes? What is it? What do you want? A confession. What? Yeah, you were Mr. Hale's secretary. You knew there was an unhappy situation there. You knew he didn't like Mr. Connolly. When Connolly died, you felt it must have been murder, despite what the police said. Well, I won't deny that And Joe, of... the chauffeur, knew exactly the same thing. So you got together. You didn't have any proof that your former boss was a murderer. Then you didn't really need it, did you? So Joe made a big show of bringing me an envelope, making sure he'd be seen by Jake Rennick, who would report it back to Hale. Oh, but I wasn't any part of it. The I next step was to send a blackmail note. If Hale was a murderer, he'd certainly go into action. He'd think you knew something and be willing to pay. Yeah, a very neat little plan, Mamie. Too bad I got flipped over. What do you mean? What are you talking about? The wrong people went into action. His wife intercepted the blackmail telegram and paid up, no questions asked. On the other hand, Hale tried to get the envelope from me. He figured it contained some of those incriminating letters between Connolly and his wife. What? Oh, Mr. Valentine, no, that's not true. Why is it people don't seem to believe in accidental death? Or that the police know what they're talking about? Because they were unhappy and because each one knew the other had a motive... Mr. and Mrs. Hale each thought that the other might have killed Connolly. And, of course, that proves neither of them did. Nobody killed Connolly at all. It was an accident. Now, look, I really don't see what this has to do with me. Just that you're the biggest sucker of all, maybe. You and Joe. I don't know how that worked. But once the Hales are eliminated, I don't know who else might have committed Joe's murder. But you, maybe. I didn't. I swear you I didn't. You were chasing him the first time I saw you. What was he doing, trying to cut you out of the brilliant stunt? Come on, let's see your hand. Get away from me! So you killed him and went out to collect the money yourself. Only Hale almost caught you. Stop it! Let go of 10, me! Ten thousand bucks and a gun someplace on you, Mamie. Joe stole it! Joe stole it! It was my idea, but he stole it! Oh, that's all, sister. Back to the conclusion of our Let George Do It adventure in just a moment. Did kill Joe, George? Yeah, Brooksy. In cold blood. And for $10,000. Yeah, poor Mr. and Mrs. Hale. Yeah. Yeah, it must have been a little rough, each one thinking Joe and Mamie had something on the other one. But in a pinch, they did work for each other. Well, maybe they'll still be able to save their marriage. I hope so. Why is it nobody ever believes the police? Mm, well, I don't know. Private detectives are always much smarter than policemen, don't you think? No, only in fiction. Would you want to be a policeman, George? Yeah. Has its advantages. Are you serious? Well, of course the police are wonderful, well, but... You know, look, after a case is over, you can just say goodnight to the chief, get promoted a couple of times, and go home. That's a matter. What? 
But then on the other hand, haven't you noticed the private eye always has to wind up in the arms of a woman? <laughs> well, occupational hazard, I suppose. Good night, Angel. You have just heard How Gullible Can You Get? Another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey was starred as George Valentine, with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. David Victor and Jackson Gillis wrote the story, with music by Eddie Dunster. Now, this is yours truly inviting you to another visit with Valentine, when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it.